I'm here to talk to you about how standardized data formats uh, empower end users. And if we could go to the next slide. Um, so when it comes to data sets, communication is everything. And on the bottom of this slide, there are two images which basically represent the same sort of data. One is the actual file that exists in Parlamin. And the other one is a website rendered based on those files. And now the question that uh, we at the Institute often engage with is if no one is there to see the data, does the data really exist? Like, is it even a thing if nobody has a look, look at it? And we recognize that data sets are representations, but we have to ask ourselves, what are they for? So first and foremost, the data sets that we generate are designed for computers. They should be computer readable, right? When governments or private institutions or even uh, science journals um, give out data that isn't readable by a computer when it's just a scanned PDF, we all complain how that is an extremely bad representation of data. And Parliament solves that problem. All right, the data is also for the researchers, so it's for the people who actually have to use it, which means that it needs to be equipped with all the possible meta information that the researcher might need. Uh, it needs to be structured in a way that's easily comprehensible that can be fed into a variety of different programs, etc. And this is also something that Parliament does great on its own. But then there's this so called the interested public and this isn't just your mom who might be interested in what's happening in the parliament, but it's a wide range of researchers and scientists and people who are still studying, so students, not specifically trained in the area you're trained in when you're producing the data, and therefore they can't really make sense of it at all, right? They can't even make the decision whether or not they want to spend the time in order to start analyzing the data. And we have to recognize that data literacy is unevenly distributed and that that's okay. We can actually do something about this. And I would like to go to the next slide, please. Um, so what we created at the Institute a few years back is something called Parlameter, which is basically a platform that takes in all the data that is available about a given parliament and then tries to group it, aggregate it, display it in a in a way that a human being can easily browse through and understand what's happening there. And then on the other hand, also provide some APIs that you're able to use to get machine readable data. And uh, Parliament was an um, amazing opportunity to now take all of these different countries which have supposedly standardized data sets and put them all into one single huge parlamenter. And in the beginning, that was uh, an okay idea. I'm going to show you a demo at the end, but at the end of the day, once you reach 20 different countries, um, you get into all sorts of problems, right? There's no way, not even the user interface could handle that because where do you put 20 different buttons for 20 different countries? Um, so there was a lot of work that actually needed to be put in this if we wanted to make it truly polished and like something that you could distribute widely and be proud of. So can we go to the next slide? Um, so we learned a couple of lessons um, and I'm going to show you in the end two versions of what we ended up with uh, in terms of Parliament and Parlamenta. And um, the most important lesson is that data stewardship is not an easy job, right? So somebody who has to take care of this data, the person who actually collects it, who organizes it, they are often the only person in the world who can actually keep maintaining that data. They are the ones who know the intricacies of that data. They know what is special there, what might be non-standard, and documentation can go a very long way into providing these things. But there are some problems which lie beyond simply can you document all the metadata correctly and can you apply this schema to this specific data set. Um, in centralized silos of uh, data representations like the parlamenter that we envisioned in the beginning turn out to be hard to maintain, right? So firstly, there are linguistic challenges because you're faced with a user interface that needs to be generally accessible and understood you can't always find synonyms that mean exactly the same thing, right? It's even in, there's things like bicameral parliaments versus unicameral parliaments, um, or even different ways of naming ministers or different ways of uh, considering what a minister's function is, or how do we view the president of the parliament or who's the leading person of the parliament, the chair. Um, 
And often those things are very, very hard to, to all put together so that they work in the same place completely interchangeable, interchangeably. The second thing is that this sort of scale requires optimization. So when Parlamento was designed, it wasn't designed to carry 20 different countries at the same time, but we thought that there's absolutely no barrier why this shouldn't be possible. But it turns out it is. Right? Certain things on Parlamento became unbearably slow, like it took days to import data and calculate everything, which turned out to be a very big problem because it scaled on to cost and not just in terms of money, it, that wasn't really the main cost that was associated with it, but in terms of man hours of how much time we needed to put in to work on a data set that we don't necessarily completely understand because maybe we don't even speak the language, but we just blindly trust the metadata that everything is going to be okay. Right? In this case, we are not the correct owners of this and we are not the people who should be doing this job. And this hurts us in terms of agility and updates. It suddenly becomes very hard to update something because the the only person who knows what needs to be fixed that speaks the language that challenges it first needs to come in contact with us. We need to find the time to do it and then we need to push it. So in the end, what we came to was this dichotomy between tools and services and how we started designing a service where people and researchers are just passive consumers of it, where the promise is, okay, just put the data in a parliament repository and it will show up on this website. Whereas what we should do is we should generate tools that allow people to actually host their own to make sure that the data is correct so they can view it and edit it in the way that they want to. And at the end of the day, nobody cares as much about the data as the people who created it. So right now, I would like to uh, share my screen to show you what we've done and what this thing currently looks like. Here we go. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. So we've created a GitHub repository in the end, uh, which has like a long readme that you can have a look at. Um, but this is how it all began. So in the beginning, um, we started with the parlamenter that had different languages and all the sessions. So let's say, let's take a look at a Polish session. And you can now see a Polish session here. You can see the words, oh, I have it open in Croatian. I'm going to switch it to English, I'm sorry. Um, so these are the words that marked the session. This is basically a TFIDF analysis and then there's a pretty transcript. And you could have a look at the representatives. Um, and again, this now loads for an unreasonable amount of time. So let's take a look at a Croatian guy with a photo, um, Bacic Branko. So for every person, you can see the TFIDF analysis for that person, their speeches, if you want to do something with them, number of spoken words, speeches per session. And then there's this metric called vocabulary strength. Um, that we calculate. And you can do the same basically for all the parliamentary groups, right? So if we choose the currently um, running, uh, the party that's currently running our government, we can see their members, we can see the whole party speeches and then these things analyzed for the party. And like all of this, if you're going to click through this, you're going to quickly realize that a lot of this is slightly broken because there's little intricacies in the data sets. And this wasn't exactly the path forward for us to take. So instead, what we created was this repository where what you do is you run a single command, you give it the country of the parliament data set that you would like to bootstrap, and it's going to generate all of the stuff that needs to happen for you to give you your own instance of a parlamenter, which means that even if you know nothing about the technology, as long as you have Linux and an internet connection and you install these two things, um, everything else happens on its own. So I'm going to show you, I recorded a session of how this looks like, and I'm just going to show you how it works. I'm going to click play here. Um, and these are now the commands. I'm in an empty folder called demo. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to clone the repository, right? So I'm just going to say, give me this parliament thing. And there's going to be a link to this at the end. And here I make a mistake because I don't go into my directory. Um, but instead try to do it uh, in the wrong folder and it dies. And also I can't type. So I go into the correct fol folder called Parliament and then I run the command to download all the code. And this takes a few seconds, so I'm going to skip a little bit. Um, and then once it clones everything, there's only one command that you need to write. And this is the command called bootstrap. 
And I add SI to mark that I want to bootstrap the Slovenian version. It asks me for my password and then it starts doing stuff. And you can mostly walk away from the computer at some point, just not at the beginning yet, because it's going to ask you for uh, your main username and password. So it's going to do, so I'm not doing anything anymore. This is all happening on its own. So you just have to give it a little bit of time. About a year's worth of data in the end takes about an hour or two to import. When you're going to be importing, you might want to run this overnight. Um, so it's going to do this. It's going to ask me, what would you like your user to be? I'm going to call it a demo and the password is going to be change me. And it's going to now notify that this isn't a secure password. And now it's going to automatically download the Slovenian data set. So you didn't have to download anything before because you entered SI, it's going to download it, extract it. And now it's going to start parsing the stuff. So for this demo, it's only going to parse one session because otherwise the video would take a very long time. So it starts parsing it. It says, okay, I have a hundred speeches. Okay, I have 200 speeches. Now it's going to go to lemmatize them um, in order to be able to run some basic analysis. And this runs a bit. So again, I'm going to skip it because there's 200 speeches where nothing happens. Um, so it does that. It says I'm done. It then creates a solar core because there's a search engine involved in the situation. It copies all the speeches to the search engine. And again, I'm still doing nothing. Uh, you just wait, drink your coffee, and then it calculates the scores. There are various scores that it calculates. It's going to say that it's calculating voting scores, but because you provided no voting data, nothing's going to be calculated, so you can just ignore that. Um, and then in the end, once it calculates absolutely everything it needs to, which should be just about now, it says I'm done. And now your parlamenter is on localhost 3066. And I've run this on my machine. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. Um, this is localhost 3066. This is my machine. There's one session from Slovenia in there. Uh, I should probably edit the name. These are all the people. The people are browsable. This is their TFIDF. This one has only one speech. We have some analysis calculated here for every person. And of course, this now exists for also all the parties. Um, basically the same thing. And of course, you can look at the sessions and you can read them. And now if you do this on a Linux server, you only need to expose the IP to a domain and you should be fine and this should be working. Um, but also what you get is you get an API, which you can uh, see how it works here. And also if you go to localhost 8000, you're going to get this nice interface of how you can get absolutely everything that's in there in case this is your jam. Um, and this is the end of my demo. If it's possible to put the last slide of my presentation. Um, so the first link on this slide is the one that you want. This is the one that sets everything up for you automatically. If you want to do anything else um, and are interested in specific pieces of the code, there's a bunch of repositories listed underneath. And then this test version where we are still importing everything because we're not done. Uh, and it's a question when exactly we'll be able to manipulate all the data so that it fits there in a reasonable way and that the site doesn't crash. All of that is on parlamin.parlamenter.org. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you.